causes, then it becomes a fitna and it can be a source of loss, a lo source of grief for us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And just think about this, many people, they work all hours to earn a living, to provide for family, which is good, but there has to be again balance. That you don't work all hours where you leave your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't work all hours where you forget the tarbi of your children, the upbringing of your children, because they need that from you. So when you're doing all of this, you're losing the greater benefits of time with your family, time with your children, and raising your children, which the best tarbiya comes from the father and the mother. So if you're losing out on all of this, if you're uh, uh, not getting the, all these benefits, you're going to be losing out. And on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when you spent all of this effort, you're going to find you're going to lose yourself and also you've lost your family as well. So what's the benefit of all, any, any of this? No, no benefit at all. And also, my brothers, in the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, he told us that wealth is the fitna of this ummah. إِنَّ لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّةِ الْمَالِ Every ummah, there is a trial for them, there is a test for them. And the fitna of my ummah is in the wealth. And Rasulullah did not fear poverty for us, but what he feared for us was that we would be given of the dunya, and that it would destroy us as it destroyed those before us. It's not that uh, the Muslim Ummah is poor, we have plenty. Allah has given us resources, has given us wealth in abundance. It may be held in the hands of a few, but there is enough to go around. So it's not poverty that is feared for the Ummah, it is the wealth that is a fitna, because this wealth, if it takes us away from Allah, then it does not benefit us when we really need it. And also, my brothers and sisters, the wealth is something that is to be used. And it's not something that is to enslave us. We don't become slaves to our money, to our work, to our jobs, to our occupation, or to our professions. But rather, we are slaves of Allah. And if your wealth, if you're seeking after this money, and that's all you're after in this world, then you've become slave of what you seek, a slave of what you desire, a slave of what you desire, and a slave of your own nafs. In the hadith of Rasulullah in Bukhari and others, it's a ta'is abdu dinar wa abdu dirham. The Rasul said the, the slave of the dinar and the dirham, they are ruined, they are destroyed. How does one become a slave of dinar and dirham? This is of course the two currencies that used to exist. Gold and silver. And you'll hear more about this later on, inshallah. So I'm saying that the slave of these two things, of dinar and dirham, are ruined, are destroyed. And also the slave of al qatifa wal khamisa, silk garments, soft, fine material. They're slaves of these things. Either so how do they become a slave? Because this is all they're after in this life. And they'll do it, they'll get, they'll try to get it whatever cost. Whether it's lawful or unlawful, and this is all they will seek in their life. This is all they're after. Slaves of their uh, desires. Slaves of money, slaves of wealth, slaves of gold and silver. Not slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reality of wealth. It's for us to use, but not for it to use us. We don't allow our money to take over our lives. And that we become enslaved by it such that everything from morning until the evening, from the time that we get up, all we're thinking is about money. All we're thinking about is how we're going to earn it. What we're going to spend it on. This is the slave of wealth. And this is not the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The slave of Allah is the one who takes what Allah has given him and puts it in the place that Allah wants him to put it. So he's pleased. So this slave of materialism, slave of wealth, is pleased with Allah when Allah gives him. 
and displeased with Allah when Allah deprives him. So this one, if Allah gives him, mashallah, he's all happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah withholds or tests him, then he's discontent, he's displeased with Allah azza wa jal. And this is the one that is going to be ruined. Nothing, no benefit for him in the, in the akhirah. And also, in another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people, they, you know, they uh, look after their wealth. They think about their wealth. And they hold on to it. But what is, this, what is the reality of the wealth that you have? What can you do with it? What can you do with it? You eat, you drink, you buy clothes, you may buy a house, okay? And then you leave it behind. Rasul said in the hadith, Ibn Adam says, Mali, Mali. The son of Adam says, My wealth, my wealth. But, Hallaka min malika illa ma akalt fa afnait. But your wealth, what is it but what you eat? And what happens when you eat it? You know, we know what happens. You consume it, it's gone. And it comes out as waste. Wallabista fa ablait. And you wear. And then over time he gets worn out. And you spend it for the sake of Allah This is what you put forward. This is your real wealth. Because all of these things that you spent and consumed is gone. It's behind you. You've had your meal. That's it. Alhamdulillah you enjoyed it. May have tasted nice. You've worn a nice, uh, nice clothes. But that's gone. It's not going to go with you. It's, you're not going to take it with you. You're not going to carry it with you in your, in your suitcase. That is a reality of wealth. And we know all of that you acquire, you can have millions, billions, but how much of that, of that is going to go with you in your grave? لغد, as Allah says, وَالْتَنْذُرُ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Let this soul look at what it puts forward for tomorrow in your grave. So how much of this wealth are you going to take with you? Millions, billions, how much? Any of it? Ah, brothers? You going to take any of this wealth with you? Nothing. In the hadith we know that when you go to your grave, your family follow you, wealth may follow you. Uh, three things follow you, and your actions follow you. Which ones come back and which ones stay with you? Your families, they're going to come back. They'll weep over you, they'll cry over you, They'll grieve over you, but they can't do anything for you in your grave. Except, inshallah, if you've left pious children. And your wealth, your money, that's going to come back as well. After you've gone, that's it, it's going to be divided. Your wife gets, uh, you know, last week you heard, uh, we've, two weeks ago we heard the talk about inheritance. If you've got children, your wife's going to get a share, your children got, are going to get a share, your parents may get a share. It's going to be divided. Or they may even fight over it. So your wealth is going to be divided. It's going to be left to them. And you're not going to take it with you. So what have you put forward for yourself then? What's going to stay with your amal? Okay, your actions. So this is what we need to think about for tomorrow. For the hereafter with Allah. Azawajal. Now ask yourself another question. Which do you like the wealth that you leave behind? Do you like the wealth of your inheritors over your own wealth? Does anybody like that? Rasulullah asked this question, very same question. He asked the Sahaba, "Which of you, ayyukum, malu warithi ahabu ilayhi min malihi? Which one of you, his, the wealth of his inheritors or his heirs, is more loved to him than his own wealth?" They said, none of us here also, none of us loves the wealth of his inheritance more than our own wealth. Okay, so what did Rasulullah say? He says that, uh, he says, فَإِنَّ مَا لَهُ مَا قَدَّمْ وَمَا لَوَارِثِهِ مَا أَخَّرْ His wealth, your real wealth, is what you have put forward for yourself, and the wealth of your inheritance is what you have left behind. So what that means, what you have spent, a part of your amal of salih, this is your wealth with Allah Azawajal. And what you've left behind, your inheritance, all that hard work that you did to, to build up your bank, 
account, your balance, your money, 